everyone. Thank you for checking out this episode of Raised on the Radio. I am one half of the show. I'm Cole Brocato, my good friend Patrick Blair in Zoom land. How are you, sir? Fantastic. Fantastic. Just, uh, just had a poo, a poo poo experience. And it wasn't your own. <laughs> it was not my own, but it got on me. So it was an experience. Oh, man, the joys of, of fatherhood. Yeah, I'm, I'm so excited for that. But let me just explain this uh, <laughs> real quick. I'd rather get shit on by a seven-month-old than anyone ever come up and sniff his head again for the rest of his in my life. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> that's, a, <laughs> that's a bold statement, sir. That's a bold statement. <laughs> I'd rather him poo on me than that happen again. You tell the I, story because you were actually there for this one. I was there, which is weird. I haven't been there for anything for a year. I know, right? <laughs> we haven't we haven't seen each other in person in a year. I know we were bad. We were bad boys. We got together and had some dinner with friends, and we did. We 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 broke protocol, man. We broke quarantine, but um, we weren't as bad as some of the people there. <laughs> man. So. so just long story short, we were at a restaurant eating. Shout and out to woman, Shamrocks. Shout out to Shamrocks. And a woman was clearly drunk as can be. Yeah. Had a wine glass in her purse, was uh -huh. taking the wine glass from the restaurant, had no wine uh -huh. in it. She just wanted a souvenir. Go on. <laughs> now we're going to, now we're going to get a message from uh, the owners of Shamrocks saying, Hey, can uh, you tell us who that was? We need that wine glass back. <laughs> She's on, they have cameras. I'm sure. <laughs> I know. I'm just kidding. She's but the anyways. lady sniffing someone's head. <laughs> She shouldn't be too hard to find on camera. It, pick it out. <laughs> so anyways, yeah. So you guys, so I was in a booth like facing the wind or against the window. You guys were on the opposite side, which was not great in the, for this scenario. <laughs> no. And then all, and you guys, so we're, you guys are physically like just sitting there talking to me. Right. Like we're just looking at each other's eyes, like talking to each other. And all of a sudden in the corner of my eye, I see this woman who's clearly drunk, just walk up back behind your wife. And it was her and her friend. And both right. of them like were really excited. And I didn't know what was getting ready to happen. And you guys still didn't know that she was there yet. And I'm sitting there thinking, what is, for one, I wanted to know what was going to happen because I didn't know what they were going to do. And I also didn't, something, I knew something was going to happen. I didn't know what your reaction was going to be. So this girl just, this woman just taps on your yeah, wife's well, shoulder. Yeah, let's clear something up. This is no girl. This is a lady in her. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, possibly 50s, probably 50s. early 50. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's, it's important to point out that this was not a young girl. This was, right. this was no girl. This was a, a woman in her fifties easily. Yeah. May, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I'm not going to give her credit. Fifties with yeah, the maturity sure. of a young girl. Continue. Uh -huh. Continue. Yes. So she taps on your wife's shoulder. And your wife kind of looks back and was like, yeah. And she goes, okay, this is the most important part of the story. Not even the sniffing. The most important part of the story, she starts off this by saying, I have two daughters and they suck. Yes. <laughs> yes. <How> we, <laughs> that's the most important part of the story for me and the funniest thing. But so I don't know. Do we need to point out that she's not wearing a mask? Does it matter at this point? But she wasn't. Um, I don't her know. Her and her friend both were maskless. Is that important? I don't know. We'll get into that in a second. So continue. So yeah, two daughters, they suck. Yeah. So two daughters, they suck. And then I missed a little bit in there between that and the next part where she says, can I sniff your baby's head? Is this a normal thing? I, I have to know. So we, we, I have two daughters. They suck. Your baby is gorgeous. Can I sniff his head? Now I'm trying to remember, was he facing like the rest of the restaurant or was he facing you? No, he was facing me. All okay, three okay. of you were facing me. Oh boy. Okay. So yeah, even weirder. So yeah. like, and I don't, I just remember looking up and just going, this isn't real. This can't be, this is a dream, right? This can't be real. And I don't, I, to be honest with you, I don't know what I was expecting my wife to do. Uh, I think she made the right choice. Normally, I think normally, in a non-COVID sort of, uh, yeah, like a non-COVID, we're trying to be low-key as responsible as possible right now. 
and not stir up it, stir the pot any more than it needs to be because in, in a COVID world, everyone's sort of on high alert, I feel, right? They're just waiting for someone to do something wrong so they can tell them that they're doing something wrong. So I think she chose the high road and rather than it, it well, she chose the high road, high road and avoided confrontation and said right. very reluctantly, but also I think this can't be real also. Sure, go ahead. Thinking like the lady was kidding. Nope. Lady leaned in and sniffed my son's head. And so I looked at you, you looked at me, we looked around at everyone else. And I can't remember, did everyone else at the table catch that? Or was it just a, it was a three-way moment with you and my I I was so engulfed in the moment at our table that I don't know if everybody else is paying attention or not. I just, I didn't know how to react. And I, I really a little bit of anxiety hit me because I thought I didn't know what you were going to do. I thought you, the, re, the reaction with you could have went multiple different ways. And I didn't know if you were going to start throwing bows at a 50 year old wo- drunk woman or not. I didn't know. No, 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 no. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 yeah, man, it's one of those situations that you replay in your head and thought, and you think like, maybe I should have said this, but it too, it's too late. I'd say, I, I'd say, would you have changed it? Like if you, if, if you knew this scenario was coming and you could have, I would have said no. Like, I would have said, I would, would have, have said, said no? absolutely not. Please don't go anywhere near my baby. Yeah. You crazy psychotic woman. <laughs> um, but I also, I thought she was kidding. I just remember thinking like, this can't be real. She's not really going to sniff his head. I think she's that, just trying to say, Hey, your, ba- a, your baby's cute. That'd be a right? weird joke. <laughs> she did it. But now, Sniffs his head. We go, ha ha. Okay. But my wife was like, okay, move along, move along. Okay. Um, she didn't say that, but she, she gave, she gave the body language like, okay, it's time to get away from my baby. Now, is this the last we've seen of said drunk woman? Absolutely not. But there was a good amount of time between which so I would she's say not like, out of our lives. No, there was about maybe seven minutes between her walking away and us kind of giving each other a look like, okay, well that that's over. Thank God. Let's Thank God. not do that again. And uh, then seven minutes later, she comes back and says, okay, so my friend is over there and getting, buying a shirt or something. She's like, so while she's doing that, can I just have like one more sniff? And I'm like, what is going on right now? You're not paraphrasing either. That's, can I just have one more sniff? And she's talking about my baby. <laughs> So at this point, I'm like, all right, man, what the fuck is, are we being punked? Like, is this, is this a hidden camera show? What is happening? And I, for a moment, was going to ask that because like, it was a special occasion. You came up for it. People knew we were going to be there. I was like, is someone playing a joke on us? Like, is that, do they know the owners or something? Like what's going on? <laughs> Has she just been COVID te- like uh, tested or did she just get the vaccine? What's happening? And then so this time, my wife was like, yes, one more time. And that's it. That's what my wife said. Yes, one more time. And that's it. She said it very aggressively. And the lady leaned down and once again, sniffed my son's head. And And the weirdest thing, like, did you see the look on her face when while she was doing it? Like when she was done, like it was like she just took a, a like a bump of cocaine. I've had a few short days. What of it? (laughs) Dude, I. So this this brings my so this this brings brings me back to the question: What did it matter that they weren't wearing masks? So I want to be very clear: We all wore masks into this place because it says right there on the fucking door, wear a mask. Can't enter without a mask. And I'm sitting by the door. We had a table right by the door, and I'm just watching person after person after person walk in without a mask. And those are the kind of people that bother me. Yeah. The people that don't read signs. Yeah. You suck. You suck. As a person who uh, I used to work retail. Let me just say something about what you learn when you work retail. No one reads signs. For no sure. One, yeah. Oh, I thought it was half off. No, it's not. Read the sign. What sign? Oh, I forgot. Let me explain it to you again. I thought it was 20% off. No, nope, read the sign. What sign? <laughs> oh, yeah, the, the sign. Yeah, I get it. I remember. I've, no one reads there. signs. So yep. even a sign that says, hey, for the for the sake of your safety and all of our customers, put on a mask. They still don't read it. So don't care. Um, whatever, man. It, it, it was nice to get out 
uh, and have some dinner, hang out with people. Um, <laughs> until the baby sniffing. When the baby sniffing starts happening, that's when you, you, they didn't cut the night short, but. Like, okay, so I, I was playing this out in my head. So she, she was kind of, this woman was kind of like adamant about really wanting to do this. And, and I'm, pl- I'm playing out the scenario in my head of like, okay, what if you said no? Like, what if you aggressively said no or said, fuck off, get out of here. No, it's my and, baby. See, see, what, what, what would she have done? Would she but, have gotten mad? And I, then, and then the funniest thing ever probably could have happened. You may have had the owners come over and like try to find out what's going on. And I just hear you yell, she's trying to sniff my baby. She's trying to sniff my baby. <laughs> she's trying to sniff my baby. Um, I think, you know what, man? I think my uh, wife, my wife, former bartender, former booze bag. Yes. <laughs> I'll let her know I said it. Uh, she can tell when someone's had a few too many. Trust me. Yeah. And I think she just played the situation in her head like, all right, this could go sideways quickly. This lady mm-hmm. is. I mean, you started the conversation off by telling us your kids suck. And our kids better. Now let me right. see if his head. This this lady doesn't have all. It's not all there. She she's missing yeah. a few microchips, right? So like, right. I think my wife did the right thing, and I think she was strategic in the way that she she reacted. So I'm I'm, so, I'm okay, happy so, about that. So weird question: Is this just a baby boy thing, or is okay. it just a baby? Is it babies in general? So, well, listen, any, any women listening to this who a either have kids or B have nieces and nephews or grandkids, whatever the case may be, is it normal to smell a baby that is not yours head? Because I'll say this, when, when we were, when we were pregnant, the one thing my wife would always say is I can't wait to smell him. Right. Really? She would say that his babies have a, a smell. And I think it's comforting to the mother and, and, you know, to, to smell the baby. Right. Okay. This wasn't your baby lady. And also you had kids a long time ago, so you should not have that scent anywhere around your nose. It shouldn't be on your mind, but I want to know, I want to know from women, is this a thing? So I explained this story to my parents yesterday and both of them thought this lady was a nut job. So (laughs) I don't, uh, I don't know how normal it is, but my parents are also from a different era. I don't think they went around sniffing babies back then. So true. We'll, I, we'll have to see. I'll, I'll keep asking around. <laughs> it's fucking bizarre, man. <laughs> I just don't, I don't know anyone that would go up and sniff someone else's baby. I mean, I've definitely never seen it before. But that could be the premise of a hidden camera episode, hidden, hidden camera show episode. Uh, excuse me, owners, this lady's sniffing my baby. No, she's not. Yes, she is. She's trying to sniff my baby. Um. That's but so depending weird. on the but depending on the people, that could like you said that you could see her in her mind, like your wife in her mind, like playing this out, like this could go sideways quick. It could definitely go sideways quick. One hundred percent. And your wife may end up having to throw a, a punch <laughs> from the arm that's not holding the baby. <laughs> I think the reaction was different because we were out with a group of people as well. I think if we had been on our own, mm-hmm. it would have been different. But again, yeah. these are all things that you do after the fact. You don't do them in right. the moment. So yeah. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> whatever. Um, I'm glad and, and, I and, was. And, and, I'm glad and, I wasn't holding him because I would have been yeah. like, "Are you serious?" Like, I wonder if she would have came up to you also if you if a male was holding the baby versus your yeah, wife. That might be. I've different. had women come up to me and be pretty aggressive about, you know, uh, yeah, being saying hello to him and like being up and in, in, in my business. Yeah, uh, I took him out to lunch yesterday, and uh, this, this, this. Uh, so he has this thing now where he doesn't like bathrooms. You know, you, if you're out in public, they have the changing table. He uh-huh. starts shaking as soon as we open up the door. I think it's because okay. of the loud hand dryers. I think that happened once. Oh, One kicked on, it yeah. scared the shit out of him, and ever gotcha. since it's a trigger. So I'm in the bathroom and I'm changing him, and there's a guy in there, and my my son's he's having a fucking fit. And there's a guy across the, 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 uh, the wall of the, you know, the urinal I'm in or the mm-hmm. toilet I'm in. And I just said, you know, I was like, cause it was a lot of crying. I mean, this guy's taking a piss. And I was like, Hey man, I'm sorry. He hates bathrooms. He goes, Oh, you're doing a great job. I'm like, okay, thanks. Then another <laughs> guy comes in, runs the hand dryer. By the way, the guy that said, Oh, you're doing a great job. Didn't wash his hands. Just walked out. 
But then another guy comes in, pisses, runs the hand dryer. And of course, my son freaks out even more. And then into this guy, I was like, hey, man, sorry. He hates the hand dryer. He goes, oh, OK, man, I've been there before. So the gentleman who didn't wash his hands is sitting at a table pretty, pretty much near the bathrooms. And he's with his wife. And as I'm walking out, he goes, there's the little guy and there's the good dad to his wife. And the lady goes, oh, my God, can I get a look at him? I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, geez. Uh, so she's, she's, by the way, she's asking while she's getting up and walking toward me, right? Now, I have a mask on, right? She does not. And then so she kind of gets up and stops. She goes, oh, let me put my mask on. I'm like, okay, that's somewhat of a, a relief. But then I'm like, give yeah. her a look. Now, again, mask on, hat on, so you can only see my eyes, truly, right? And I'm giving the look through <laughs> the mask and the hat, like, okay, six feet. Don't, don't break the plane because then it's going to get weird. And I don't want to have to be like, no, get away from my baby. Um, so that happened yesterday. So there have been a few times I remember actually same, same, same restaurant that we like to walk to, uh, have a few beers, watch sports and eat lunch. Uh, one time this lady was like, I'm obsessed with your baby. That was the first thing she said to me. And I was like, oh. I don't know if that's the way you start a conversation that makes right. me feel like you're going to try to steal him. You're right. Yeah. I'm obsessed with your baby. And I was like, Oh, thanks. I, I, and she's like, he is gorgeous. I'm like, Oh, thank you. You know, meanwhile, her piece of shit kid sitting there at the booth by himself while this lady's <laughs> trying to love up on my kid. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, the kid's like eating just little fat chubby kids eating a chicken wing. <laughs> like, thanks mom. <laughs> anyway, whatever. <laughs> That's the things you learn, man. This is the first go around. So I don't know. I don't know. Well, can, can I, I, I think you're in the same boat with me on this one. If you don't know a person, but somehow you have to have some kind of interaction with them in a bathroom, that's probably all I need to have for the rest of my life. Once you walk out of the bathroom, that's over. It's right? over. It's over. I don't it need you to, in the bathroom. especially I don't need you to go out to your wife and talk about how gorgeous my kid is. Like, okay, we had an interaction in the bathroom. That was it. But that I didn't even see the guy. The last time I see you in my life. <laughs> but he didn't even see my face. Oh. I didn't see his face. Where he's on the other side of a wall. I was just sort of being like the courteous, like, hey, sorry about the annoying baby crying. Yo, know, gotcha. men's room. I don't think men want to walk into a men's room and hear babies right. crying. Man. You know? But yeah. this, is, this is dad day. We go out. We have beers. We watch sports. Sometimes you're going to have to hear the baby cry. Right? Right. Yeah, uh, for sure. So, <laughs> so I didn't, I never saw him. He never saw me. He just saw a guy walk out of the bathroom with a baby. And I think he's thinking like how, how many fucking babies could be in there? So I, I, he's assuming I'm right. the guy, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I, I, I've already dealt with that quite a bit. Um, so yeah, yeah. I, but it's always been like middle-aged women. It's never been younger women or young girls. It's gotta be, man. I don't know. It's kind of gotta be like the, I guess nostalgia of having a baby at yeah, one I mean, time. It's, and it just uh, like overcomes them. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And, and I, know. yeah, I mean, my, well, my, my, my older sister, she has actually said that like the first time she held him. Uh, and this was like right after he was born. She didn't see him for months after that, but uh, just because of, she also been going on uh, works in the medical field. Um, so was avoiding seeing people. And um but she even said, you know, as soon as she picked him up, she was like, was just, you know, oozing the sort of like, uh, you know, a, a throwback to having babies. She has four mm -hmm. kids of her own. And uh, she looked at my brother-in-law. She's like, no, I don't want another one. We're past that. But still, <laughs> it, it, you know, um, so I, I, I think that makes sense. But some people just are. But those are people I think that would just be rude in public and invade your space anyway. You know? Yeah. Baby yeah. You're no baby. Also, she was stealing a wine glass. So we should have expected nothing less <laughs> of a woman stealing a fucking no disrespect. I don't know how much they pay for the wine glasses, but like a six dollar wine glass from a restaurant. You, you're a piece of shit. Right. Anyway, <laughs> it's not a souvenir. It's not a take. It's not a it's not a to go cup, you moron. <laughs> anyway. I, I so. So, yeah, get, get ready for dinner. this. Get ready for this. <laughs> at least there was some good entertainment the first time we got to see each other in person in like a year. Yeah. Yeah. We got to explain that story to everyone that showed up afterwards being like, did you, you didn't see it. So guess what happened? There's a baby <laughs> sniffer in the room. Just letting you know. 
Oh, well. Let me ask you this. Um, have, you ever had, uh, have you ever had a dog stolen? Mm, no. No? No. So this is like a... I was thinking about this. You know how Lady Gaga got her dog stolen or the guy. Well, Jesus Christ. You know what people are, this is the funny thing. So like people are making a bigger deal about the fact that her dogs got stolen. than oh, by the way, the dog walker got shot. Well, you know why? Why? I mean, this is a celebrity's dog. That's how, that's what Two our dogs. culture three dogs. is. I don't know how many. Th- three, three French bulldogs that cost 10 grand a piece. First of all, why are you doing that? I know people that have Frenchies. They don't cost 10 grand. Why did you pay 10 grand? I get it. Anyway, um, and yes, I said Frenchies. I'm a dog person. I know all the lingo. Get over <laughs> it. Um, but no one's talking about the fact that this guy got shot. Right. Rude. Can we? Can we? Uh, this poor fucking guy is the guy. He's okay, right? I don't know. I haven't heard. Holy since, shit! We like, don't know right if this guy's alive. I'm not. Sh- I'm he's not. He's got to Sure. If but he's, like the but okay. after it happened, like the, the biggest the big story about the whole thing besides the fact that the guy got shot was just a matter of like, what's the scenario? Is it because it was Lady Gaga's dog dog? Right. They wanted those dogs or, or you know, is uh, they, they were going down the road of like the Lady Gaga did some political stuff or was the face of some oh, political stuff. Sake. So they're thinking that she, that this guy was targeted because they knew that taking the dogs from Lady Gaga with, you know, all this kind of stuff. So, I, I still, I, you said before the show that you don't think that's what's going on, that they're saying that he wasn't targeted. Well, here's why I ask. So where I grew up, dogs getting stolen out of backyards or dogs getting stolen was like a common thing, unfortunately, yeah. for real. Uh, not, yeah. oh, my dog ran away. Like, no, someone fucking took my dog. I saw them pick it up and run. You know? Right. Yeah. Because they would try to get the reward money. They would hope that no one would see them. Someone would go, oh, my dog's lost. They put up a flyer or they, well, now people do it on Facebook and shit, but like they put up a flyer, right. uh, lost, whatever, um, call this number, potential reward. They're thinking, yes, right? Mm-hmm. Take it all the time. No one thought that that's, could potentially be what happened. Like not necessarily targeting Lady Gaga, but like, hey, this guy's walking three dogs. We're in Hollywood. We're in L.A., Someone's probably going to miss those dogs. And oh, by the way, they probably have some money. But yeah, I read, I read on Twitter this morning that they like the investigators don't think it was like they were, they were targeting him because they knew it was Lady Gaga's dogs. I think he went to a, a shoddy liquor store on the dog walk. The people saw whoever took the dogs saw that guy and thought, all right, guy's got three dogs. We are where we are. He's probably got some money. Let's, let's see if we can rob him. Cause they found the dogs tied to a pole. So I think it was just a, it was just somebody. Oh, they to, did. Yeah. So huh. I think it was just, they were trying to get some quick cash. That's what it's. So have they, fa- have they found the person who did it, who shot him? I don't think so. There's no. video, huh. but I didn't want, I didn't bother. I don't, I don't like seeing that shit. I just wonder, okay. If somebody, if, if somebody is this shitty to do something like this and shoot somebody, do you think that they're, if they didn't know at the time that, oh my God, those are, that's Lady Gaga's dogs. Do you think that they got pissed off once they found out that it was? That they didn't Perhaps. keep the dogs. Yeah. Well, they <laughs> like, gave, she gave 500 grand. This. She gave 500 grand to whoever found them tied to the, the poles in some alley. Right. Could have been the people who, t- who t- I, I, again, that's a common scam. Yeah. I, we saw it all the time growing up. I just, I just wonder why the guy was shot unless it was a struggle situation. Yeah. I mean, and well, just that kind of happened or if he pl- they planned on doing it. Right. I mean, it all started at a liquor store, so you can only imagine what type of uh, characters were in there, you know, thinking but about. But also, like, it. I under okay, I understand that it's dogs, but why are you going to the if you're Lady Gaga? Why are you are you pissed that your dog walker's stopping off at the liquor store on the I dog would be. walk? I would be for sure. So she you know, I, under, I understand that it's not like, okay, you're babysitting my baby and you're going to the liquor store. It's dogs. I get it. But still, it's no, like, no, fuck that. No, you're still it, on a dog walk. Yeah. No, fuck that. You don't take, you, you're being hired to walk my dogs to give yeah. them exercise, not fucking go to the, no, fuck that. I'd fucking fire them if it were me, yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, for sure. I do. We, as a dog owner, we don't trust anyone with our dogs. 
Yeah. It, it, it takes a lot. Uh, it has to be like when we, when we go out of town and we can't take them and if we have someone stay with them, it's someone we, it's a family member. It's someone we know is good with dogs. It's someone we trust. Uh, we, we do, we've, we've taken them to a, a kennel twice. One experience was okay. And then the second one was terrible and we'll never do it again. It was terrible. Both of them got sick. Uh, both of them got kennel cough. Um, our little dude, like he, uh, uh, let's just, uh, we'll just call it what it is. He had a chafed asshole. Okay. Like, like other dogs were do it where. No. Huh. So we asked about it. We're like, oh, well he had poop like stuck in his hair. Cause he's a hairy dog. He had poop like stuck in the hair. So we had to get it get it out of there or clean it off. And I go, did you use sandpaper to do that? Or what <laughs> right. the fuck did you do to my fucking dog? So yeah, yeah. no, I'd fucking fire that guy. Yeah. Stop at the liquor store, dude, go, go afterwards. What are you doing? Right. Um, I don't know. Maybe there's more of the story. Maybe she sent him to the liquor store. I don't know, but yeah, maybe, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I, I would never trust a dog walker either. You know, there are all those like services like Uber for dog, dog walking. Not in a yeah. million fucking years would some stranger right. show up to my house and take my dogs. Not happening. Right. No fucking way. I don't care how many stars you have, dog walker. It's not, I don't care how many good reviews you have. Nope. Not happening. Nope. That's not a weird, happening. That's at a all. weird thing, right? Just to be a dog walker? No. Well, I mean, is that that's what you're a, asking? No. I mean, <laughs> that's kind of weird, but like, Dog walkers can make good money, especially if you're in the right city. But like, no, 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 no. Like, uh, like an Uber app for dog dog walkers, you know. Like, there's I mean, there. I mean, it, it, why is it kind of weird though? Because I mean, it's it's like there's an app for everything. Why can't there be like uh, you have you have dog walkers around you? No, I get that. Find there's the an app for everything. But what I'm saying is, it's weird that people trust strangers with their animals. I guess is my point. But uh, okay, again, we're overly protective of our dogs. They were our kids before we actually had a real one. So, um, and they still, right. are, but, um, yeah, that's fucking weird. There's going to be, there's going to be like an Uber for babies. I guarantee it. Someone's going to do it and it's going to get, it's going to, it's going to happen. Is that, does that already exist? What do you, what do you mean by that? Uber, like for a, like babies. a, like a, like a, like a daycare, like someone is your, your babysitter. And it's like an, it's like the dog walker app where you, the, you put in your information and then it goes such and such is available to walk your dogs at this time. And such and such is available to babysit your kid. I guarantee it already. That probably already exists. Okay. Somewhere. That, okay. Here's the thing that probably already exists. But if you are a person that does that, you're an asshole, you hate your baby. Like you if you're the woman, it. it's Shamrock. You let everyone <laughs> sniff your baby. <laughs> fucking asshole. Um, fuck. Uh. <laughs> Dude. Oh man. You think that already exists? No way. I bet I bet it has. Maybe not in that form, maybe not like uh okay, you need a babysitter in a pinch. Here's the closest babysitter to you. It's probably not like that. But I'm sure I'm sure that like there's an app out there that says here's all the people who are li- you know listed as babysitters in your area kind of thing probably. No way. And you can probably you can probably contact. I bet there is. There's got to be. There's one something like that for everything. That's fucking, that's no, not why would you do that? I don't well, know. dude, look, when I, when I grew up or when I was growing up, I should say, I haven't grown up yet. I'm still a kid, <laughs> but when I, when I was growing up, uh, my parents would, well, not just my parents, my parents, the parents of my friends, they would leave us with anyone. It was just, we need someone to babysit. Okay. Next door neighbor. We've never met. Come on over. Like, dude, yeah. Yeah, it was. So I guess we created the app. We just never followed through. Damn it. We could have made some money. Son of a bitch. But that that goes back to what we talk about all the time, though, is like that was just the time, right? Oh, for sure. But we didn't like you can't you you couldn't do that now. I don't think people do. It I mean, now, I, no. I don't think people you could. Do it you now. could. You could. But this was but, people... but that was also that was also a time where like if you woke up on the weekends, your parents were like, dude, get out of the house. Go find your friends or go something. Well, I don't want to see you until 100 percent uh, fuck weekends every day. Go go play. <laughs> get out of here. But I yeah. 
I didn't, I didn't like to be at home. So I was always like, uh, I'm mm -hmm. going to jump on my bike. I'm going to get a football game together. I'm going to do something to get out of the house. Uh, right. And, and be with my friends. Yeah. Yeah, man. I, yeah, I don't think people do that anymore. I just don't. They, we just, <laughs> it's probably smart. <laughs> yeah, probably a good idea. <laughs> but we didn't have, like, we didn't have babysitters for very long. Like, you know how some people will, like, even as they're, well, I had, like, so, like, I had my my neighborhood friends, and then I had my private school friends who were just grew up in a different element than I did. But they would get, they would have babysitters until they were, like, in their teens, you know. Um, not, I mean, no. We didn't have right. that. I mean, it was soon as it was like, oh, you can put a, a lasagna in the oven and not burn the house down. Cool. We're leaving. Like, right. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's funny. I, I did. Uh, which, I mean, you know, you, you grew up more in the city. I did not, of course. So it, it's not, it wasn't really, uh, people weren't available to just do that most of the time. Like as far as like, because they live hey, 50 hey, miles away you, from can, you. Yeah. Can you watch my kids? So I was more in the daycare. I did daycare a lot. Never went to up, daycare once in my life. Well, there was, I really didn't have a, my, my parents didn't have a choice. I didn't have a choice. My mom worked day shift and my dad worked swing shift all, all my, my whole life growing up. So yeah. they, there's, there, there just wasn't any other option besides leave me home alone. And once, once I could be left at home alone, I was, you know, same concept. If you can throw a pot pie in the oven, then we're, you know, you're good. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's just one of those. Well, I say that I didn't go to daycare, but I also had a stay at home mom. So that's why. Right. But like today, these days now, even if parents are home, they still like to send their kids to daycare for the interaction and stuff, you know? Yeah, true. Which yeah. I guess is good, but I still feel, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I don't have a choice. My, my, my kid's going to be going to daycare eventually, I feel, but it's good that we don't right. have to pay for it because of our, because of the, our working situation, it's good that we don't have to pay. Like, and I've, obviously if we had to, we would, but we don't have to send our kid to daycare because we're here. Yeah. Which and I think see, that's, that's the scenario the that I've got right now. And I've said, you know, with my, with my wife being pregnant now, I said from the get go, it's like, ah, uh, like life kind of waited until we were in the perfect situation before we got pregnant. Like, because my, my parents, like we bought my parents' house and my parents put a trailer on this land, on the same land. It was kind of like a trade-off. Like we bought their, the land in the house for a little bit less in return. They got to stay on the land. They were just getting a little bit older and they didn't want to take care of it that much anymore, but they didn't want to leave the land. So that was kind of a trade-off, but it also worked perfectly because it's like, okay, a month after they move out of this house, we're pregnant. <laughs> they retired this year or last right. year. So now it's like, okay, well, we have a babysitter eight feet from our door. So that's a plus. That so is. my kid, my kids shouldn't, you know, won't have to do the whole daycare thing growing up and stuff like that. And I'm sure it's a good thing, but you also hear a lot of horror stories now too, about kids being neglected in daycares and all that kind of stuff. I'm not saying that everyone's like that. I'm just saying that you hear horror stories. It's, it's going to take a lot of me sort of letting my guard down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I, I don't want to leave my dogs at a kennel and I'm supposed to leave right. my kid at a kennel for brats. I don't know, man. It's, it's going to be rough. It's going to be, it's going to, yeah, I don't know. We're going to have to find the right one once we do it, but thankfully we haven't had to worry about that. So what you got to do is you just got to teach your kid MMA early. That way he can defend himself in daycare if he has to. Oh, you want me to teach my kid MMA? He's going to get yeah. his ass kicked a lot. <laughs> point that out. Someone else can teach him. And I'm okay with you that. Can't, That's you, fine. you can't at least te teach him like a guillotine choke or a triangle or something. I mean, <laughs> half-assed on both of those, yes. Um, sink the guard in first. Uh, sink the yeah. hooks in, I mean. I mean. See, I already got it wrong. Yo, man, um, this kid's got, he has no he's future in, in MMA. He's in trouble. <laughs> sink the hooks in. That's what I meant to say. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta do that because then when you, you, someone tries to bully you, you just, you let them know, Hey, Oh, you're not trained. Oh, you haven't been training. You're just a, a big dude who likes to push people around. Guess what? Here's that three piece in a soda, you know, on, on a piss soaked floor. Ugh. Ugh. Jesus. <laughs> We're leading into something here, by the way. <laughs>
Yeah. Well, the it's 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 a viral viral video. I can't believe how much attention this has gotten. I think it's because well, one like we we live in like the uh, we're still in like the world star environment where like anything anytime someone gets knocked out or there's a fight or there's some sort of confrontation for whatever reason people love watching this shit i've never been into it i can't it's i don't like seeing people get knocked out if they're not in a in a controlled sort of fighting element but yeah it's uh, spencer jones i believe is the dude's name he's a wide receiver and what a placeholder i guess for oklahoma so pretty high profile school high profile position Mm-hmm. got into a scuffle in the bathroom some mm-hmm. some bar bathroom or nightclub bathroom with some a dude who was significantly smaller than him but 10 years of mma training now th- this bad uh, idea spencer from what i from what i seen apparently there was something happened before the video started rolling of course well, that's always the case every video yeah. you see is out of context right of course everyone reacts to the out of context portion and not the, what actually happened but right what did actually happen is this football player is a big dude he's in front of a little guy and he's clearly antagonizing him i mean he's he's bringing this upon himself now whether he was he was now whether what he did was reactionary to one of those guys throwing a punch at him or pushing him or what we he's claiming that it is like i was defending myself type situation the video that we all see doesn't show that the video we see is you antagonizing this dude. And then you find out this dude's a fucking train ass kicker and he kicked mm-hmm. your ass. And oh, by the right. way, his friend kicked your friend's ass too. His friend yeah. got it worse than he did. Yeah, dude. You know, he took a little, he took a few shots, got thrown to the floor and then got put in a choke, but his friend got slammed into the wall and got knocked out. And then yeah. oh, by the way, while he was knocked out on the piss soaked floor was taking a few shots while he was out. Yeah. Yeah. Hang on. Okay. Before we, before we move on with this, because this reminded me of that with the whole by being knocked out and then taking shots. Uh, let's go back to the Derek Lewis fight real quick. Okay. You, do you know what, you know where I'm going with this? The whole, like at the end, how Derek Lewis had already won the fight, but Herb Dean hadn't jumped in yet. Right. And he still got a couple more shots in while he was on the ground. And then when Herb Dean finally jumped in and pushed him out, they were yelling at him because he he hit him more, and he goes, "That was Herb Dean's fault. That was Herb Dean's fault." And everybody thought that there was like a major beef between Herb Dean and Derek Lewis, but okay. it was really just Derek Lewis saying, "No, I know how this game works. Anything can happen. I'm going to continue to fight until I am pushed off." Yeah, like anybody can get up, or the ref may not even jump in. It just depends on the situation. So I don't know. I, I just I started thinking about that when you when you said that, and I was just curious on what your thoughts were. Uh, well, that could have been a walk-off KO. Let's be honest. But yeah. yeah, I mean, those guys are told they that's don't but, stop but until you, the ref stops you. Do you blame Herb Dean for not jumping in sooner? Or do you think, I mean, if you're a ref, you, there's going to be a couple of second period before you can get in there. And you're also talking about two giant dudes that you have to get in the middle of to try to stop it. Well, he, he had to get in front of one. The other one was. Okay. Out-cold. Well, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I mean, people are saying he was kind of out of position and it took him a few seconds longer to get there. I I think that's, that, that happens. I think that's just part of the game. You know, could he, could he have been in better position possibly, but Derek Lewis isn't wrong. I mean, Masvidal said the same thing when he, you know, hit Ben Askren with that knee. And then when Ben was out, he kept throwing until he was pulled off. I mean, he's like, I'm, I'm, I'm trained to throw until the ref stops me. I'm trained to fight until the ref stops me. So could I be a good guy and uh, think that the guy's knocked out and stop? Sure. But uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I mean, bad, whatever. I, I don't think Derek Lewis was wrong. I don't think Herb Dean was necessarily wrong. It's just one of those situations that, you know, unfortunately unfolded that way. Right. It's hard to, it's hard to place the blame. I mean, the easiest thing for everyone to do is place the blame on the ref and protect the fighter, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, if you call a fighter an asshole for, for hitting a, a knocked out guy a few extra times, he's always going to say, well, the ref hadn't pulled me off yet. That's going to be his defense every time. You mm-hmm. know? So it's a lot easier to go, hey, ref, where were you? You suck. I don't know. I'm never going to Monday morning, you know, Monday morning quarterback where a ref was or if a fighter did that. You know? It's also, it's also Herb Dean, and it seems like he takes the most criticism out of any 
referee in the UFC. Anyways. Lately, lately, yeah. So he's become the target for sure. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. But anyways, back to the uh, OU fighter or uh, OU football player and getting his ass handed to him on a piss soaked floor in a bathroom. He learned a valuable lesson, man. And it's one that we all, uh, we all, if you haven't learned it yet, you need to be thinking about, you don't know who's standing across from you. You don't know how much training they've had, you know, because if they have, and you have it, you're, you're in big trouble, big trouble. And that that's pretty great. Like I'll play a clip here in a minute from uh, the Pat, Pat McAfee show that talks about, you know, he kind of says the same thing, but it's like, you're taking a big risk these days. Like a bar fight isn't what a bar fight used to be, no. you know, 15, 20 years ago, maybe even long, maybe even longer than that. But I mean, the past, you know, 10 years, at least you have no idea who you're fighting. No, you, you as he says, you can look for the cauliflower ear and, you, but it's not always going to be there. <laughs> That's not always going to be, always gonna be there. And you're know. not going to have time. You're going to, you, you've, yeah. you've fucked with a guy who's been training hands <laughs> for the last 10 years and he's, you, he's already got you, yep. you know, while you're mm-hmm. looking for the cauliflower ear. Yep. Yeah, man. That's, it's weird. To th- it's kind of strange to think about. I mean, uh, you know, I just remember like bar fights and, and high school fights and, you know, party like house party fights and stuff. It was all just a bunch of people throwing haymakers. Like there mm-hmm. wasn't, you know, MMA, MMA was, it, it, it was around, it was it existed, but the level that it's at now with people just, starting training early and everything like that. It's just, it didn't exist. So yeah, you never thought about it, <laughs> but you got to now you got to now. And I think of all the people I've seen talking about this story, like Pat McAfee probably nailed it because he made a good point, but he also was like kind of funny about it. Yeah. And then there are guys who are comedians talking about it. And they're, it was just like world star world star got fucked up, bro. Like, ugh. Who are yeah. you? You tell jokes <laughs> for a living and that's your take on that situation? You suck. <laughs> anyway. I'm going to go ahead and play this clip. Here we go. Yeah, what you are messing with. You have no clue what killer is on the other side of said drunk fight. That person could be rolling in his basement every single morning, 5 a.m., trying to break your neck, arm, and leg at the same time. And what did you do? You're in the bathroom stumbling out. Oh, for you look at me. Fuck you. Bang, pop, pull, dead. You are done. Can't fight anymore. Okay, just can't do it. Nope. Spencer Jones learned that this weekend in the bathroom <laughs> in Oklahoma. Can we please run the footage, please? Don't have it up yet. Okay, great. It's only one way to learn, though. Affliction shirts actually banned at the bars back home. Yeah, oh, that's why. <laughs> you know what else they should have got rid of? And I don't know if they will now. <laughs> they no, no, call for our ears are earned. By the way. Those are not banned. <laughs> and by the way, if I had one, I'd feel like the coolest person ever. That punch pressure thing. Where you punch it and then it puts a score oh, on yeah, it. Yeah. Oh my God. You walk into one of those, it's like, all right. So much stuff. They always have those at every strip <laughs> club, right, too. Just are. sitting there. All right. So, what's going to happen here? All right. Look, first of all, let's go ahead and give a little look see around here where the call flyer is. <laughs> yeah. When that particular group makes its way over to the punch machine, we all say, yeah. They're the winners. Congratulations. Good night. If there's some stooges there, when call flyers make their way over there, <sighs> Stooges need to get out for the, for the sake of everybody in here. We just need to realize that we are in a much different time than we were 15 years ago. These wrestlers that used to just be able to wrestle you. Guess what? They have watched what wrestlers have made millions of dollars doing, which is fighting people. And as soon as they get on top of you, they'll, they'll drunk bar fight elbow you in the uh, face. And oh. you're just eating. You're like, what the fuck is this? I thought we were throwing. Were we boxing? No, you're not boxing. You just got into a fight with a bear and you had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> he makes a good point, though. Everything you said is, is is accurate, especially the the punching machine. Get rid of those. And uh, who ever thought that was a good idea? But let me tell you something about those. I remember when those I started, those started appearing in bars when I first started going to bars. I remember that. But those those go all the way back to like the eighties, and they used really? to be in cowboy bars. Now I never went to said bars, but I heard stories about it. Um, yeah. They were very big and like country western line dancing like bars. I don't know if that's a thing. Is that a thing? That's a thing, right? I'm not making this up. I think I, I mean it was. I guess it's yeah, I don't still know how is. popular they are now. I but yeah. So yeah. No, that's 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 
the origin of the punching machine, I think goes back to those again. I don't know this to be a fact, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is <laughs> either, but they should, they shouldn't be in bars. Bad idea. Would you, go would, to a you place, attempt, would you attempt uh, to do, would you attempt to punch one of those with cowboy boots on? I've never tried punching one of those ever. Me neither. I don't need people. People already see me and go, I can fucking kick that guy's ass. I don't need them. <laughs> I don't, they don't need more of a reason to think that <laughs> watching me punch one of those things. No, I don't need to give them a reason. Um, no, stupid. <clears throat> but um, I remember going to a bar. God, this is so long ago, but like back when I first, I was probably like 21, 22. We used to go to this bar a lot and it was a very tiny bar. Uh, mixed, mixed crowd is a very weird element that hung out there, but we knew, I think we knew maybe I had friends that knew the manager perhaps, or maybe the manager and a couple of the bartenders. So we drank for cheap. We'll just put it that way. But they had one of those machines. And man, always, 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 there would be the guy that would have a few too many, start punching that machine. Sure enough, out in the parking lot, that was the guy getting into a scuffle. Always, dude. Always. It was like clockwork. You could, you could pick the guy out in the crowd like, oh, there he goes. That's going be be, to be the guy on the ground in the parking lot. When the bar right. closes, we know it. <laughs> uh, and it just, it, it, yeah. So you got to get rid of those. I don't know. Do those exist anymore? I, don't, I haven't seen them in a while. I know there was one at Pops uh, in a while. I'll say there's probably one at like Dave and Buster's. That's a whole nother thing. We don't... <laughs> but I'm, I'm amazed. Like the guy, uh, which I don't know if you know who he is. Do you know who the guy is that was talking in the video just now too? In the background? The one that said that affliction shirts are banned in his, at bars and his... I don't know. Hometown. Have you ever heard of that? Well, they should be banned everywhere because they're terrible. But well, besides that, um, like, no, I, never... I guess it, it's I guess it's like, like probably like a small hometown thing. And it's probably like most of the fights that happen around here are because somebody wanted to look like a badass by wearing an affliction shirt. And also, is it the affliction shirt guys who have rhinestones on their jeans too? normally? Typically, yeah. Like they're buckle yeah. guys. Yeah. <laughs> but do, do people still wear affliction? I'm sure they do. Really? Or has, that never, moved I mean, to like, has it moved to like American Fighter and stuff like that? Maybe? I, I don't know, man. I never. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, is, dude, affl it, is affliction still a brand? I don't know. But I know when it started, uh, you know, it was it was it was associated with, oh, this person either thinks they can fight, watches fighting or can fight again. Three things I don't need people thinking about me, so I never put the shit on, you know? Uh, um, but, like, uh, I, I've never heard of that being banned. No, that's that's weird. Hmm. I mean, it's not weird. I, I kind of get it because, again, there's a stigma attached to the people that would wear that shit. But I bet if you Google a recent picture someone in Nickelback is still wearing an, an affliction shirt. <laughs> Probably so. And I Probably mean that so. with the utmost respect to Nickelback. <laughs> I'm certainly not hating on him, but <laughs> I, you'll the, probably the, still the, see him the, at a Nickelback show. And now that I think about it, yeah. I don't know why I asked that stupid question. The one meme that I see, I still see floats around sometimes and it's so corny, but it still makes me chuckle a little bit is the one that says your shirt says UFC, but your body says KFC. It still makes me chuckle every time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you this. How do you, do you associate the brand roots of fight with affliction? Now I know it's a different thing, but like, do you feel like people that wear roots of fight are those, I, the, I, do you know what I'm asking? Like, are those the people, like the people that wear roots of fight now at one point in time wore affliction? Or is it just, it, is it really just a so. fashion it, line? It's kind of a fashion line, but isn't Roots of Fight more, um, don't they promote like older fighters more than anything? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a clothing line that celebrates history and they pay like homage yeah. to older fighters and, and, um, but I always see fucking tough guys wearing it and then want to be tough guys wearing it. So I, I don't know. Because I'll be honest, they've had a few shirts that I was like, oh, I kind of, I would, I would get that. Like, that's cool. Um, and I think they've gotten a little more 
playful with it. Like they have like wrestling guys now, like Breath Hitman Hart and uh, like older wrestlers have like their own line. Oh, do they really? Um, yeah, and actually, the, one of the one of the Bret Hart shirts, I actually was like, I'd probably, I could probably see myself <laughs> wearing that, and that wouldn't be too bad. But also because it would be like ironic, like, ah, uh, but I don't watch wrestling, but I used to when Bret Hart was a wrestler, so this makes right. sense. Um, does uh, Jushin Thunder Liger have his own? He line? doesn't. I'm waiting, he and when he does, he I'm fucking smashing that <laughs> shit up. Don't even worry about it. You laugh, but when you see me in it, you'll know. Um, yeah, I just, I, I, because it's become a very big brand online, like with people on podcasts and I guess the talking heads of the fight world, like they all wear it. So I'm just curious. I, I, I don't know. Like if you've somewhat, okay. So like one of the, one of the biggest designs I've seen is like a Mike Tyson uh, hoodie and t-shirt. So like if someone sees you walking down the street in that, do they automatically have the same trigger as if they see you in an affliction shirt 15 years ago? You know, I don't, I don't know. Or are you just sell it? Is I, it like I wearing guess, like a Jersey? You know what I mean? Yeah, that I would say that, but also I would say, I don't think roots of fights roots of fight is old enough. Maybe to, they don't have the, the reputation yet. Yeah. Yeah. Could they have that reputation? Are we, are we going down a dangerous road know. or are the right people wearing it is my question. I don't know. I mean, that that's the chance you take regardless if you put out a line that anybody can buy, right? Yeah, I mean, they but they have fighting. They have like old baseball players. They have basketball, football, wrestling. I don't know. Meh. Maybe I'm overthinking it. I don't know. I've been, I, I guess I've had this conversation way too many times in my own head where I was like, oh, I will see something. Because I follow them on Instagram just to kind of see like, what, what are they doing that's new? And mm-hmm. something will pop into my feed and I'll go, oh, that's pretty cool. But do I want to wear that? Yeah. You know? Do I, do I want to wear that in public? Does someone see me wearing like a fucking, you know, uh, I don't know, like a, a Ward Gotti shirt and think like, does this dude think he can box or like, what, what is he, what's really happening? I don't know. I, I, I guess I'm thinking about it. Like those that are unfamiliar with the brand and what it stands for, are just going to see me see someone wearing a boxing shirt and go, this guy thinks he can fucking kick ass. I don't know. When you, Okay. Legit I'm, question. I'm, I'm a I'm a crazy person. I understand. I have way too much anxiety about the world, but this is just way no, my no. You don't because works. no. What's fun? What's funny is that I think I I think the same way that you do. I'm learning this as you talk. Yeah. So like when you take a shirt off, or when you're looking at through your shirts in the morning before you put one on, are you just looking at this is the shirt I want to wear, or are you looking at I just want to be comfortable? I don't care what I look like, or are you thinking about if somebody sees me in this shirt, what do they think? Uh, I'm not thinking about the last thing you said, because if I've already purchased it, I've, I'm way beyond thinking about that anymore. I've, I've said, fuck okay. it. And I'm like, I'm going to wear this. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Why you think about that? A little bit. Really? Yeah, I do. Uh, I don't know why. Yeah. I it's mean, just weird. It's not really anxiety. It's just more of like, a. I don't know. Go, just go. I go too in depth with, I guess, thinking about what other people are going to think about how I look that day or something. I don't know. It's, it's fucked up. My head's weird. Everyone too. has the, has those thoughts. I don't think, I think maybe you think about them more than others, but I mean, yeah. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. I have yeah. such anxiety about going out in public. It's typically not about what am I wearing unless it's an affliction shirt or something that says kick this guy's ass. But I, nah, I don't know. I mean, nah, but I, I guess I, again, sort of, maybe that's why I'm overthinking because a lot of time with, with, shoes and clothes and shit it's like fuck it i'll wear it whatever i care what people think yeah um but i don't but i'm not like jared leto you know what i mean like i'm not like i'm not like johnny depp i'm not walking around with a pirate patch on and like women's (laughs) pants and i don't know like a a fucking fur scarf like i'm a jeans and t-shirt guy and sneaker guy that's pretty pretty much where it ends but i don't know right (laughs) <laughs> I'm going to get the Brett the Hitman hard shirt now just to prove my own point. God damn it. You should. You I'm should. going to do it now. Fuck it. I don't want to be a hypocrite about this. Because now people are going to be like, Where, where's your, where's your, I thought you didn't give a fuck. Where's your Brett Hart shirt? Huh? Thought you didn't care. No, I do care. And don't sniff my baby's head. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be a good title for the show. Don't sniff my baby's head. It is. Head. I'm, I'm already ready for it. Oh, uh, Frank Mir fighting. Oh. Tarver on the undercard of Jake Paul and Ben Askren. Oh, God. 
Is that, is that it? Just, Oh God, can we just leave it at that? <laughs> that sums it up. Doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. I, I, Frank's going to get pieced up. I, but, but is it even, but how old is Antonio we, 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 Tarver we, uh, now? He's forties in his forties. Frank Mears 40. So, uh, yeah. I don't it is the biggest story that Frank Mir is, is boxing Antonio Tarver or is the bigger story that Frank Mir is fighting on the undercard of Ben Askren and Jake Paul. No, 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 no. Hold on. Frank Mir and oh, former multiple time world champion Antonio Tarver are fighting before this doofus. That's the story. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's the biggest deal. It's horseshit. Okay. It's horseshit. But that's so. You, that's, but you don't. You don't even think about Frank Mir in this scenario. You're just talking about Tarver. <laughs> I mean, Frank Mir was a fucking UFC champion. I, uh, yeah. Uh, ugh, I don't know. I don't know what I, I. I tweeted as soon as that news broke. I was like, maybe I'm starting to regret ever saying that Connor versus Floyd was a good idea. And I think I stand by that. I think it. I think it was a bad idea because of where we are now with this. And if you look back on it now, wouldn't you think that you would see this happening? Because we knew how big that fight, that boxing match was going to be. Right, right. So we should have known. Like we knew, we knew how big it was going to be. So we should have known that like this is going to create a storm moving well, forward. I, I mean, well, look, I think it did where there was a lot of, there were a lot of MMA fighters asking for boxing matches. Uh, but I think it was more just like social media call outs. There was never any real anything. Right. So maybe we did set ourselves up for this, but you got to understand at the time too, man, like Connor was such a fucking star. Like it, you just, and to be honest with you, I think Floyd had a lot to do with it, but I think Connor could have been fighting someone else. And I think it would have been potentially as big. I don't think it would have been the same because a lot of times, like I said, the, the reason that it was so good that it was Floyd is because people tune in to watch Floyd lose. He's never lost, you know, mm -hmm. people don't like the guy. So, Oh my God, what if he lost to a guy who's never boxed professionally and is the biggest star in the UFC, that would be something that was the allure, right? Mm -hmm. But I think if Connor had fought someone else, I think it would have been pretty big. You know, if it had been Pacquiao, then I think it would have been huge. If it had been, you know, uh, I'm just throwing names out there, like a, a Terrence Crawford or something, it would have been big. Now, Terrence Crawford doesn't have near the name as Floyd. I get it. But they would have found they're, they're, the promoters would have found a way to make it a fucking big deal. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I think we did set ourselves up for that. Um, I still don't think it's OK for. YouTube stars to be in the same sentence or same breath as real fighters. No, I'm, I'm not with it. I'm never going to be with it. And well, I you, do stand okay, by what you, I said. You, huh? You say you'll never be with it, but I mean, what if by chance Jake Paul just goes on this run and he went, oh, he, he, he does these fights for like 15 fights in a row and he wins all of them. Does what fights fights like these real boxing boxers matches. or well, huh? I mean, I have to imagine he's got to be, he's got to be start throwing real boxers into the mix. He will never fight a boxer. Not going to happen. Okay. He's not, he's not, dude. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I'm just saying, okay, if he does several of these fights, he's going to get even more of an ego than he's already got. And he may want to throw a real boxer in the ring to try to test himself. Okay. Do that and ha and have fun spending time in the hospital. Okay, I, I'm just I, asking I, questions. <laughs> I, I, you know, I don't know what we mean by real boxer, like an amateur, professional, both. Um, you know, I, well, I mean, is there an, is there an amateur boxer that has enough name significance to for him to fight? No, but there are thousands you know, you that know, would kick the shit out of Jake Paul. That's, that's my true, point. That's true. Yeah, that's very true. That's my I'm point. just saying you know that you're not going to see the fight unless no. the, there's a name behind the person he's fighting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, name recognition maybe. First of all, you're going to have to find a boxer who's willing to degrade themselves enough to do that. There aren't many out there. I'm sorry there aren't. 
Like yeah. when we talked about Floyd and Logan, which ultimately is not happening now, or I guess it got rescheduled or Floyd's willing to do that. Floyd doesn't give a shit about, you know, the, the integrity of boxing. He's in it for a paycheck. Um, so he's an exception to the rule, but there are, are several fighters out there that are not, that are currently fighting, right. That are currently still names and still in, you know, if they don't have a title could potentially be a title holder. None of those guys are going to fight Jake Paul. They're not, it's not going to happen. You know, you could take the guy that got his ass kicked by Canelo last night, you know, who's now he's uh, been in two title fights. He's lost both. Well, one was a no contest. Um, or what? No, it was a technical stoppage because Darrell's head was cut. So like you could take that guy, Abney Yildirim. I think I said his name right. He's Turkish. So it's a tough name to pronounce, but you could take that guy. Would he fight Jake Paul? No, I don't think so because he's two wins away from potentially getting another title shot. You know, many people just thought he shouldn't have fought Canelo last night, but he was named a mandatory ta- challenger by the WBC. What, that? BC, B, yeah, what WBC. does that mean? It means the promo- the the organization says who the champion is going to fight. So it's not necessarily the next person in line that gets the fight. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to unify a title. It just means they've named a mandatory challenger for you. Huh. So this guy was named mandatory mandatory challenger. Guy's ass kicked, like most people knew he would. Um, but even that guy, he wouldn't fight Jake Paul. And watch the fight last night. Canelo was in a different universe. This guy's not near the level of fighter as Canelo. That guy would get in the ring with Jake Paul, and he would look like Canelo did last night. It's just, it's just different. Yeah. Um, and I hate that you've got me talking about this again because now I'm. When is that fight even? When is that supposed to happen? Hey, I Jake don't Paul know. and Askren? Is it I soon? Well, I stand by what I said. If Jake Askren, Jake Askren, Ben Askren wins, I'm getting, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, or, 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 the dude that did your Kobe shit. I always forget. Right yeah, hand Jordan robot. Massey, right hand robot. Yep. I'm right hand robot. I'm getting him to do me a Ben Askren print and I yeah. will put it up. Yeah. With pride, with pride. It won't be a joke won't be a joke. And I'm going to write Ben a letter and be like, Hey man, I want you to know when this started, I wasn't a fan. I respected you, but now you're my dude. You live in my house. Now <laughs> I want to find out when this is, I just have to know. Let's find okay. out. Is it, it's okay. gotta be coming soon. Well, I guess it's not too soon because Frank Mir and Tarver just got added. So like there's gotta be time to train or does training not matter anymore either. Guys don't need to train for fights anymore either then. Right. Um, I guess, I, I don't know. I don't know how that works in the boxing realm as much as the MMA realm, like how, I mean, I'm not saying they don't train, they train just as hard, but I, I don't know how that works. Like how camps go and all that kind of stuff for a boxing, a boxing match versus an MMA, ma- uh, MMA fight. Yeah. But you still need to train. Yeah, for sure. Who cares? Well, I'm not going to watch it live <laughs> anyway, so fuck it. It doesn't matter. You may, I don't know. You might. I'm not going to spend money on that. I feel like I I've heard you I say this many times, to- like many times about different things, different fights. Like I'm not going to pay for that or I'm not going to do, I'm not going to watch that. And then- I can't support the shit show, man. I can't, I can't, yeah. I can't, I can't, I can't be trapped in this, uh, this idea that this guy should be fighting on a card with Antonio Tarver and that he's the real fighter on the card. He's the one that everyone should be watching. Yeah, I get it. Boxing fans know who Antonio Tarver is. That's it. Yeah. And boxing what, fans what? should be upset that he's, I don't know. It's good for, I mean, may he'll get a payday. I, I don't fucking know. I, What's our, what, what weight class are we looking at for like, Jake Paul. How how much does Jake Paul weigh? So Wikipedia says that Jake Paul is a cruiserweight, which would mean he fights at 200 pounds. So Askren's probably not going to cut down. Or does weight class even matter with these with these fights? Yeah, fuck? yeah they're making up a new weight class. It's called shit class. That I mean, <laughs> fucking, uh, shit weight. <laughs> fucking assholes. How long have we been talking about this? You bother me, dude. Damn it. <laughs> But I do stand by that, Ben. If you win, you're going on my wall, bro. Right, I'll, keep a, I'll keep I'll keep right hand robot on standby. You, all right. Well, I'll reach out to him. But yeah. <laughs>
let them know. And I do want to point out one more thing before we go. That picture you sent me of, uh, 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 what's his name? Andy Ruiz. Oh, yeah, yeah. Don't be fooled by it. Really? He did the same thing before the second Joshua fight. Now, he looks like he's lost weight compared to what he was when he fought Joshua the second time. But he likes to do that girl, that 14-year-old girl camera angle where it's way above his head and he goes down on himself to slam yeah. you down. Everyone yeah. does that trick, bro. You got to take a real photo. Also, why are you doing that? Why is he doing the Snapchat photo? I mean, it's publicity. Anyway. What do you mean, why? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this liquid death sure is good. Water in a can. Fancy shit. Fancy, fancy. Let's get out of here. I gotta right, got to my baby's head. <laughs> <laughs> I want a straight for you.